It's time once again to step out, step up, and step into the Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with Coming Out Coach Rick Clemens. Rick's expertise in the coming out process has helped hundreds of men and women step out of the closet to live authentically as gays and lesbians. Freeing you from the feelings of guilt and shame, Rick's heart-centered approach is loaded with bankable advice and take-action tips for living powerfully on the other side of the closet door. Each week, the Coming Out Lounge brings you heartwarming coming out stories, thought-provoking insights, and diverse perspectives for living out and proud. Pull up a chair and spend an inspiring hour in the Coming Out Lounge. Stepping out, stepping up, and stepping into living your truth. Here's the host of your show, Coming Out Coach, Rick Clemens. And no, no, you can't be gay. You can't be fat. No, you can't even be unhappy. And no, you can't get a divorce. And no, you can't do that to your children. You know, those were all thoughts that I just kept having perpetuate my thinking before, during, after my journey out of the closet until I took a deep breath and I began to say yes. Yes, I can be gay. And and quite honestly, I can be fat until I'm not. And I can experience being unhappy until I'm happy. I can go through a divorce and I can be this for my children and so much for. Because you see, once I started learning that I can say yes, then the word no becomes the minority in my life. And even when you have to say yes to stepping into pain or challenge or that fear, you're always making room when you say yes You're making room to embrace the freedom that comes when that pain starts to step aside and those challenges move to the past and that fear goes back to its own dark side. Hi there, I'm coming out Coach Rick and I am so thrilled to be on the show today. I am sitting here three stories up in a beautiful condominium looking out over one of the most gay-friendly places on earth. I am in Provincetown, Massachusetts, right at the tip of Cape Cod. It is a beautiful, breezy 76-degree day. I can see the tip of the Cape out there and the Atlantic Ocean. And I just have to tell you, this is one of those days that I am thrilled to be saying a full yes to taking in all the blessings I have as a human being right now. I'm spending a modern family vacation with my partner, my two daughters, and my ex-wife, and we are having a great time here. But what I'm more excited about is to bring someone that has become a very integral part of my life to the show today, and she's become a really great friend. Her name is Marla Gorlick, and in her own way, we're, we're kind of having her own coming out party today in so many ways. She's going to be sharing so much with us, and she's a beautiful lady, funny, insightful. She's gone through her own periods of saying no, and she's actually now the creator of Full Yes Living. So without any further ado, I just want to say, Marla, hello from the East Coast. It's Rick. How are you? Good morning, Rick. I am good, and I have to tell you that when you started your opening with about being fat and being divorced and this and that, I thought you were talking about me. Yeah. (laughs) Well, you and I both had similar journeys, didn't we now? We did. (laughs) Very similar journeys. So I know that sitting here on the East Coast that there was actually an earthquake out back there at home this morning, wasn't there? Yes, yes. And, And how convenient for you to leave the state. And, yes, leave, I, and leave me to handle this on my own. Well, I knew you were very capable of handling it on your own because <laughs> you're perfectly capable of handling everything. So um, anyway, so welcome so much. I miss you, my friend, and I'm so glad to have you here today. Thank you. It is really an honor to be here with you. And I know we're going to have a great time, and we're going to start out by really just talking about this full yes living. And um, if you could, Marla, because so much of what we talk about on the Coming Out Lounge is about people coming out of the closet, but you and I have had those beautiful conversations where we talk about coming out as just something that everybody does, regardless of where they stand. And I know prior to you really living your full yes life yourself, you were kind of hiding in some spaces in your life. So I'd love to have you just kind of talk where, whatever you want to talk about as far as how you hid from living your real life until you decided to come out and say, I'm living a full yes life. Well, okay, thank you, and I'm happy to share that. Um, but the first thing that I would say about that is 
I don't know that I really knew that I was hiding until certain transitions, certain experiences occurred in my life, which then made it so glaring. So I was always um, the very high achiever. I was the, the consummate pleaser. I was the person that could... Uh, make the room laugh, make the room comfortable. I excelled in everything. So what's changed? <laughs> I, <laughs> well, wait, you didn't let me get to the good part. Yeah, but, <laughs> but what I realized, and it wasn't until the experience of my divorce, was that I had designed my entire life hiding a very specific part of me, and that was the woman. Mm-hmm. So the, the feminine piece, the relational piece, and yes, I had a million friends, and yes, I, uh, I was so successful in my career. Everything was just right except this feminine piece and this woman that was missing. And thanks to my divorce, uh, and I am so eternally grateful to my ex-husband who uh, left me with a mirror so that I could look at myself and really see how I showed up in our marriage and, and in our intimacy. Um, I, that's what helped me to begin living my full yes. Well, and I think what you just shared, Marla, is so, it's so profound because... This is so much what happens, I think, with anybody who's coming out, whether it's coming out of the closet to declare your sexuality or you're coming out of some transformational experience, such as a divorce at 40 some years old. Suddenly there is this mirror that you just stand in front of and go, "Okay, so this is what I really look like. Right. And there's nothing you can hide from. It's like this is the real you. You can try to hide it, but in some moment, once that, bl- what I call the blow or, you know, that big life bang transformation happens, there you stand in your Ross moments with yourself. And, you know, you and I are come from the same coaching background. That's the moment we get to choose. We choose how we react in those moments. You're exactly correct. And so many women that I meet who seem to be in this same place where they avoid certain parts of them that they, that they determine are unacceptable. Right. And, and they and, only let the other parts show. Right. And, and, you know, I know you shared with me, but one of the things that you said is this just kind of seemed to be this is the normal way to do it. There wasn't like <laughs> there was any other way. I mean, as you were living it, it this was normal life, it seemed, correct? Yeah. Yes. It was normal life. I was perfectly content, but it wasn't until something that changed my life and what I thought at the time was changing it in a bad way, but it actually changed it in a marvelous way, uh, I would have kept the same process and I would have kept the same behavior. Well, I think this is really interesting because this is so much a piece of that where we keep the same behavior, we keep the same process until basically something comes and kicks us in the rear and says, uh, can you wake up now? It's time to really start living and things the way they should be. You're exactly right. Right. And sometimes it can be really hurtful and it can be really painful. You know, it can be those moments like you and I have talked of, whether it was your divorce or me coming out and, you know, knowing that when I got off that plane, you know, as I've shared with listeners before and in several venues that you've been at, when I stepped off that airplane in Los Angeles, knowing full good and well, I was getting in the car and driving home to tell my wife and my children that this is really who I am. It was that kick in the pants. Mm-hmm. It was just it's one of those moments where you don't know quite what's going to happen, but I know you've shared with me in that moment, you knew you just had to keep going somehow. Yes. Some way. yes. And, and the, uh, sort of the light bulb for me was, okay, you've been doing it this way for 40 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, how's that working out for you? Right. And, and that was it. It was no longer hiding, no longer avoiding, no longer, as I describe myself, I was the queen of sweeping things under the rug. Right. And no more. All right. 
Well, and one of the things you shared with me too is, and I know this because I've been around you a lot, you have this very much, uh, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get this done. This is, that's kind of how Marla rolls. Let's, you know, let's just get it done. Right. But in that moment, even in those let's do it, and you and I, again, are so similar because I have that same kind of trait, that's actually what really in so many ways helps us hide from our real truths <laughs> because we're so busy. Let's just do it. Come on. Everybody's expecting us. Let's just do it. Rick, the Marlas of the world, you're supposed to do all this. And this helps create the quote, what I call the facade of life, you know, because we're so busy doing that we don't even have time to take a deep breath in and go, why am I doing this? Correct. And what and what you've done for so long has worked. Right. So why no. change it? And that was where I was. Right. And it works not only for you as a person, but it also works for that little nucleus of family and friends or whomever else is depending on the Marla to make it all work because this is how we roll in life and to Correct. roll. Correct. So. And, and I will be very candid with you and tell you that it was, it was very important to me that my image stay intact mm -hmm. and that Nothing should rock that. Nothing should shatter that. I, I didn't know what would happen if, if I showed up any differently. Right. And I think that's a really interesting thing to bring up, and that's something that we're going to talk about in the next segment, because it is those moments where our own image and perception of ourselves, whether you're coming out of the closet as I did, or you're breaking three, free from a divorce and a marriage that was no longer serving you, suddenly it's those moments where, okay, this doesn't work anymore. It purely doesn't work. And when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about how our own perceptions of ourselves in those moments really keep us hidden until we can no longer hide. So we'll be back in just about a minute. And I'm with my good friend, Marla Gorlick, as we're talking about how... You You've been listening to The Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with Coming Out Coach Rick Clements. We'll be right back after these messages. I look into the window of my mind. Homeschooling? Have questions? Get your pen and paper ready. It's the sociable homeschooler, Vivian McNinney. Fridays at 5, 4 central on toginet.com. After a handsome blue-eyed Texan fell in love with Vivian at the Victoria Station in London, she found herself at DFW Airport with a tiny suitcase and a snazzy little duffel bag. Well, 25 years later, she is now happily married to that blue-eyed cowboy. They have four grown children, ages 24 to 18, who became willing guinea pigs when she unwittingly stumbled upon the world of homeschooling. Wildflower Academy flourished for 15 years. They survived and thrived, and you can too. Vivian will be covering a wide range of issues that face homeschoolers. What do you do with kids in the summer? How to set up your one-room schoolhouse? How obedience is paramount? And what to do with those snakes? Plus, you'll be sharing ideas and insights that she gleaned from other homeschoolers. So join us for an engaging hour with a sociable homeschooler. Vivian McNinney. Friday afternoons at 5, 4 Central on toginet.com. Do holidays and celebrations get you down and leave you feeling frazzled? Then join Sandy Fowler and her guests on Heartfilled Holidays every Monday at noon, 11 a.m. Central on toginet.com. Sandy will help you discover the secrets to having the celebrations you've always dreamed of while adding fun and meaning to your life. From Valentine's Day to Christmas to special family events, Sandy Fowler will show you how to put the fun and meaning back into those special days by taking a look at what we can do to turn the upcoming holidays into cherished memories and show us how to allow it to intertwine with everyday life. For more on the show, Sandy, and to receive Sandy's Holiday Happiness Booklet, go to HeartfilledHolidays.com. Then get set to discover the secrets to creating happy holidays and happy everydays by joining Sandy Fowler and her guests on Heartfilled Holidays every Monday at noon Eastern Standard Time on Toginet.com. Welcome back to the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clemens. 
And welcome back, everybody. And we are back moving forward full tilt with a full yes with my wonderful friend and guest, Marla Gorlick. She's also a certified professional coach and the creator of Full Yes Living. I just love that, Marla. I love it. And I know so much of that name came from the experience you had in your divorce and finding yourself. And right before the break, one of the things we were talking about is how we masterfully kind of, as you so beautifully put it all the time, sweep things under the rug because uh, we have these perceptions of how we're supposed to be in other people's eyes. And um, I think really what you described about your own divorce and that moment when it's like life is no longer as it should be, suddenly the perception of who you were dramatically changed. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what began to shift in that moment. Uh, well, let, let me just, as a, as a preface to that, let me just say that being so attached to things staying status quo, yeah. I was willing to stay in my marriage as it was, yep. not being the right thing, not being the right relationship, just so that I didn't have to experience that shift. Wow. That, that's how powerful the attachment was. Well, you know, and I love this because this is a direct correlation to exactly what I lived. I was so willing and I had a beautiful marriage. There was there was nothing wrong with the marriage other than I wasn't in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Literally. I mean, I was, but, you know, from an intimate perspective and from a truly being in myself, I wasn't there. And I think this is such an interesting dynamic and an interesting correlation you and I have where we were willing to stay in it because of what we were afraid other people would think if we didn't. Exactly. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. And I know we're not the only two people on earth who've done this. I mean, I, I could, with the divorce rates being what they are and everything, I mean, I could just go on and on and on. But this is what this powerful thing is. And if anything that I like to really bring forth in these shows is the power of truly being who you are and not pretending to be something you're not. It doesn't matter if you're coming out of the closet or you're going through a divorce or you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to get that new job. That power of really standing up for who you are and in your own beliefs and not pretending is so, so vitally important. Yeah. So in the midst of all of this hubbub of activity and everything. And I, we're going to go to one of the places that I have to commend you for coming on to this show to start talking about what we're about ready to talk about, because there was another piece of your life that literally couldn't get swept under the rug. <laughs> yes. Literally. It was a good thing that the divorce came first. <laughs> and it did because I remember when you and I were talking, one of the first things you said is how could I, be anything but supportive around what was about to happen, given the fact that I had just gone through a divorce and had all these feelings and everything that I was hiding behind. And what we're talking about was suddenly in the midst of all this or shortly thereafter, one of your son, your son came to you and said, I uh, remember all those girls you keep trying to get me to go out on dates with and everything, mom. Well, I'm not really attracted to them. In fact, I'm really more attracted to guys. Yes. And, and then once he picked me up off the floor, I was fine. <laughs> <laughs> and knowing you, I do believe that because I know how you think we've become good enough friends that you stood in your own self and said, I cannot be anything but supportive. That's correct. And it was not, um, it was not just those simple words that, okay, uh, I'm fully supportive and tomorrow's Tuesday and, and let's go on. Um, it was definitely a process because now I was faced with a repeat of, oh, my God, uh, what will people think now? Look what I did now. Right. And that's a lot of guilt for a parent. Yes. Yes. It yeah. was all my fault. And, you know, it's really interesting because I remember when I came out, and I had come out twice in my life to my parents, but the second time was like the real deal. It's like, this is really it. There is no 
sweeping this under the rug, mom and dad, this is the real deal. And I remember the guilt and the shame that I started to hear coming out of their mouths. Mm -hmm. Yet it was more guilt and shame because it was almost an embarrassment to them, not because they felt like they had done something wrong. And what I'm kind of hearing from you, it might have been a little bit different that you really were more concerned about a lot of things for your son. One of them being, you know, his own life. You know, what kind of a difficult life might he face? Absolutely. And and that's that was my initial reaction was, uh, oh, my God, what what kind of life is he embarking upon? And all I saw was the difficulty. I saw uh, him being ostracized. I saw him struggling professionally. I saw him being beat up in dark alleys. Anything that was negative and scary is what I saw, and it, it made me very sad. And that was, that was the initial reaction, and I cried in front of him and shared this with him. Mm-hmm. Um, I was glad that I did because uh, it, anything that you can release doesn't carry as much weight inside. Absolutely. But one of the things you've also just said to me from time to time is it's really difficult. And I think until you're actually a parent, none of this really sinks in. But regardless of whether it's someone coming out of the closet or your child saying, I'm going to go pursue this kind of career, we're just, you say it so beautifully. You actually said, we're not wired to let our children hurt. (laughs) Rick, I'm a Jewish mother. Well, yeah, that adds to it. But. Jew, Jewish mothers just do anything, jump right. through any hoop, <laughs> not to let their children struggle, suffer, or hurt. <laughs> that is so common with Jewish mothers. Seriously. <laughs> is it that guilt thing, or is it just this is how the Jewish culture really is, is mothers don't let their kids hurt? Uh, I, I don't want to speak for all of them because they're probably not all like me. But um, I, my, my children are just the, the lights of my life, and right. uh, I, I want them as any loving parent to, to have a, a joyful, peaceful life. Mm. And when your children have that joyful, peaceful life, it's, it's not out of coming from a selfish space. This is just what you want. No, this is just pure love from my heart. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, one of the things that you shared at one point, but I'm going to ask the question is, what is it like being the mother of a gay son? And I love how you have shared that with me before when you answer that question. So what is it like? What is it like? Um, My answer to you is I have three children. I have uh, two sons, one daughter. I do not have two straights and one gay. I I have three children. Hmm. And And Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. But the reason I'm being so quiet is because I think that's just such, it's almost like a beautiful bumper sticker. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it is like the P flag bumper sticker of, you know, parents, families, friends of lesbians and gays. It is, it is one of those moments that I just have children. I don't see one as gay or two straights. I just have three children. And I think it's just so warming to me when I hear you say that, because as you know, that's not always the case. Yes. Yes. And you know, Rick, I will be very candid with you. I did have uh, some, some fear, some angst coming on this show because I am airing a very personal business of my family and uh, so at times, since you and I made this arrangement, I've hesitated, but I stayed really with the mission. And the mission was if I can help one mother shift her thinking a little bit toward her son, and if I can help one son have the courage to have a different kind of dialogue with his mom, then it's worth my discomfort being on this call with you right now. And I so appreciate that. And you and I have had those conversations and we had, a, we actually had a really very, 
very touching call last week before this. And it is this moment. And, and I'm just like in the same space, Marla, if we, through this medium, and you know me, this is what this medium to me is all about. If I can reach one person, yeah. if I can change one life, if I can change one dialogue, and this isn't about gay rights or any, this is about humankind. This is about being human and going, okay, this is the real stuff. It's a child, it's a person, it's a human being. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's about, bottom line. Right. And it's big stuff. You know, you and I even talked about this last week, and uh, so I'm going to air my own dirty little laundry right now that, you know, my own parents don't even know that I do this radio show because it could be very controversial with my relationship with them because we still agree to disagree. And this is where I said I'd start to talk a little bit about the two different sides of the fence because you have a relationship where it's I have three kids and there is no straight gay. They're just my children. However, my relationship with my parents is a little bit different. I still have a relationship with them, but I'm their gay son, and that's not good. Yeah. And it is, you know, I'm accepted. They toler tolerate, so to speak. But this is where it gets really kind of dicey. And I, so I totally appreciate and understand this space you allowed me to bring you into because this is where we begin to bring our family into a whole another medium regardless of whether there's 50 people that end up listening or 500 but it's all about truly sharing our feelings so we've got about a minute to break what was some of the other feelings that came up as you started to navigate through this with your son uh some protectiveness i, I won't say some a great deal of protectiveness so Having a gay son, I find that I listen very carefully to people. I'm very sensitive to uh, gay jokes. I'm very sensitive to what happens in the news. Uh, I'm very sensitive to judgment. So I'm, I'm a mom through and through, and I protect him uh, in my own funny way. And um, that's, that probably would be what comes up for me that's different Right. Uh, my other two children. Cool. And we're going to go explore some more of that. We're going to be going to break momentarily, but I'm so enjoying this conversation. You've been listening to The Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with coming out coach Rick Clements. We'll be right back after these messages. I look into the window of my mind. Second chances. We all deserve them. And we are all worthy of them. Second chances. With your host, Midge Noble. Thursdays at 8 p.m. Central on TogiNet is like coming home to warm, fresh baked cookies, a hug from Grandma, or an enthusiastic greeting from your dog. Second chances, hosted by Midge Noble, a licensed professional counselor, is affirming, warm, genuine, validating, and thought provoking. Second chances is a place to be heard. A place to laugh, a place to cry, and a place to be seen. For more on Midge and Second Chances, check out MidgeNobleSecondChances.com. Then be a part of a show that will change how you think, how you feel, and what you do. Give yourself the gift of Second Chances and see where it will take you. So take a deep breath, open your heart, open your mind, and join host Midge Noble for Second Chances. Thursdays at 8 p.m. Central on Toginet.com. Friday Nightcap Radio, 10 p.m. to midnight with Christy and Laura on Toginet.com. Broadcasting from their scrappy kitchen in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. They've got nothing better to do than riff with their favorite Brooklyn-based independent vendors, artists, bands, bartenders, foodies, weirdos, and news stories. Featuring the live studio audience. Betty Rehab and the Gay Boys. Sex and dating commentary with the impersonal. The unknown political biased man. And people who kind of know stuff. Stream on after your long week. Brooklyn's variety show of madcap intellectualism. Friday Nightcap Radio with Laura and Christy. 10 to midnight Eastern on Toginet.com. Radio like you've never seen. Oh. 
Welcome back to the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clemens. So here we are, and we're doing a bi-coastal program today. I'm sitting here in the East Coast. I'm Rick Clemens, coming out coach, sitting here in Provincetown, Massachusetts, on the tip of Cape Cod. And my guest, Marla Gorlick, is shaking things up on the West Coast now. Or, or being shaken up, as we talked about at the beginning. There was a little earthquake out in Southern California this morning. So we're going to keep shaking things up. So I want to jump right in and continue to talk about this whole dynamic of your son coming out and how things happened and how the family reacted. And so one of the things I know that you made a reference to was, you know, there was some judgments that started coming up as this thing started to unfold for you. And what did you learn about judgments as you watched this relationship between you and your son begin to shift and take on new dimensions? What did I learn about judgment? Uh, well, I can give you the obvious answer of judgment is terrible. <laughs> but what, what I can say at a deeper level is, once again, it was a mirror in front of me uh, asking me, so where do you judge? Mm. How powerful is that? Yes. Yes. And something tells me that that kind of also, and we're going to get to talking about, you know, your full yes living coaching, but I think that probably has led you to a lot of looking at life and going, who am I to judge? Absolutely. And mm. uh, And I had... Uh, really lessened my my judgmental nature enormously, exponentially from the divorce. Mm -hmm. This was just another step in my process to uh, to really embrace uh, accepting and the and accepting people's differences and accepting people for who they are and not um, I'll use the word attachment again, not being attached and mm. need to control certain things. And what was another big obstacle that you had along the way as you came through that transition? Uh, oh, boy. Uh, letting go of the self-blame was enormous. Mm. Um, that, as I said to you earlier, I, I assumed all responsibility that I had a gay son. I loved him too much. I nurtured him too much. I babied him too much. I, I did all of these too muches. And then when I was done with the two matches, uh, then I uh, launched into these were all the things I didn't do enough. Uh, so there was an enormous amount of self-blame. And as, uh, as I love to share, thank, thank goodness my husband got a hold of me and uh, put me in my place and said, oh, really? Y you have quite an ego. You really think that you have that amount of power that you can determine, determine a person's sexuality? So, so we had a great uh, laugh over that. <laughs> that's part of that's part of the makeup of your family. I mean, you that one of the things that drew me to you when I first met you a year ago was you just have this very interesting sense of humor and I've now learned more and more that this is kind of a family trait. Your entire family is like a bunch of humorous yes. and comedians. Generations of um frustrated comics. <laughs> Who, who have only seen the very small stage. <laughs> and what's funny that came up was even in the midst of your son coming out, you know, how did the rest of the family handle it? Yeah, they were amazing. Uh, you know, his, his younger siblings uh, did basically a so what and who mm. cares and, uh, and duh uh, and his, his own grandmother just her response was, oh, well, no big deal, but you're going to marry a Jewish girl, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, const gotta... Constant humor around, uh, around the situation, love, support, and humor. And, Rick, I, I don't want to leave out one piece of the obstacle. And when I actually shared with my son that I felt so responsible and blamed myself, he really confronted me with, so if, if you're blaming yourself and you're feeling responsible, then basically what you're telling me is something is wrong with me. Mm. And the moment I heard that, um, that was devastating. And it was really, that was pivotal to end 
this self-blame. Well, that's almost one of those moments when, you know, and I say this all the time, when the student becomes the teacher and the teacher becomes a student, your son basically took you down to your knees at that moment with that observation. Absolutely. And how I was not realizing it, I was judging him. Yeah. And sometimes I think this is where we miss our own beauty and brilliance is when we have someone so candidly literally bring us to our knees. That's the only way I can really think about it right now is they bring us to our knees in a very loving, gentle way that makes us take that deep look in the mirror and go, okay, I see it. (laughs) I see it and I truly feel it. And, you know, I'm never one to really say how stupid is that, but that's one of those moments where you go, really? How stupid do I have to be in this moment to not? (laughs) Because I hate saying stupid. I just, there's nothing stupid in life in my book. There, everything, there's always a reason, a purpose, and everything has its beautiful meaning. But that moment really was when he wanted you to kind of go, Mom, don't make me slap you, so to speak. Exactly. And it really, um, I think, magnifies the absurdity of so much of what we believe and how we create our lives around right. these beliefs. So, you know, one of the things that I'm curious about, and being a father myself, um, when this comes up, and of course, you're a mother, I'm a father, so I think this will be a really interesting dialogue. Do you think it's harder for a mother to handle the words, I'm gay, or a father to handle the words, I'm gay? I think the reactions are different. I think the mother uh, probably reacts more from an emotional place, or I will speak for myself, more from an emotional place with the tears, the immediate fear, uh, perhaps it's the disappointment of, well, I, you know, I guess I won't have grandchildren from this child. And, right. and I believe, and at least I know in this case, with my son's dad, that he, he came more from a mental place, more from the intellect, where it was um, not, not a great deal of emotion. It was, you're my son. I love you. I accept you. You're a wonderful young man. Wow. You know, I will say, having had some experiences with my own daughter, which I don't know. I don't know where she stands. And my youngest one, she's too young to even somewhat be there yet. But my oldest one has, you know, kind of kept me guessing even to this day. And I found for me, the hardest piece was, but you're my daughter and you're this beautiful blonde haired beauty. And this isn't what you're supposed to be, even though I'm gay. (laughs) I had put her up on her own princess pedestal. And when I realized in that moment, that's exactly what I had done. It was my own bringing myself to my knees and saying, are you really going to act this way? Hmm. And like it when your parents acted this way around you and that you weren't supposed to be this. And when I suddenly realized what was happening for me was I started envisioning her being with some girl that was like, you know, a big I'm going to say the word bull dyke, you know, the big lesbians that I don't find myself necessarily liking. Mm-hmm. And it's, it scared me, not because it was potential. And again, we still don't know where she'll end up. But I realized in that moment, it was all my stuff. Had nothing to do with her. Nothing whatsoever to do with her. Right. So it's just, you know, and I'm a gay dad. So, you know, I wish I had right now. It would be one of those lovely moments to transport a straight dad onto the show and go, so how would you do? You know, it's so interesting when you get into these moments. But um, thanks so much for that sharing that, because I think it is the mothers come from this emotional space. It's that nurturing, want to hold their child in a space of let me protect you. Right. So well, and, and certainly that, that's how this mother did it. Mm, mm. So as you've been progressing through motherhood of a gay son now, um, anything that's come up in his life that's shocked you, scared you, made you go, this isn't what I wanted? Ah, this isn't what I wanted. 
Um, the the only thing that that comes up is uh, that that I may not have grandchildren from this son. Mm. I have to share with you that um, my my children are such blessings to me that um, I can't even imagine, you know, going to that place of what you're just asking me. And and then I would say to you, and who am I to go to that place of, well, this isn't what I wanted, and uh, I don't like this, and I don't like that, when I put my children through the greatest devastation of their life, which was uh, experiencing the divorce and and their family being uh, broken. So who am I? Right. Isn't that interesting? Because that's actually what bothers me more about coming out of the closet than actually coming out of the closet was the divorce I put my kids through. Interesting. <laughs> Bother me that they have a gay father because I'm still their dad in so many ways, which is kind of ironic because I'm still their dad, even though I'm a divorced dad. But the pain and the agony, and it, it actually hits me harder with my youngest one. And I'll try to make this quick because we've only got a couple of minutes till we go to break again. But she, she does not ever remember us being, quote, a family. Mm. All she remembers is mom and dad always living separate and dad and George being together. So it's just, it's really, really interesting how different pieces evolve and shift and things such as that. So we're going to go to break here in just a few minutes. And when we come back, I really want to step in because so much of what we've been talking about with Marla is the foundation that between divorce and her son coming out and everything has really positioned her into this beautiful space of being this vibrant and supportive and I'm going to say in your face in a loving way full yes living coach and um we've got 30 seconds before we go to break so that's what we're going to talk about does that sound good to you marla it sounds very exciting i look forward to it i do too and i love the full yes because this is where you begin to really embrace life in a whole new way so when we come back marla is going to start talking all about her full yes living what it means to be You've been listening to The Coming Out Lounge, a safe space to be you and your truth with Coming Out Coach Rick Clements. We'll be right back after these messages. I look into the window of my mind. It's time to awaken your creativity and unlock your greatness by listening to The Nancy Pristine Show every Thursday from noon to 2 Central Time on Toginet.com. Nancy is also known as the happiness and well-being ambassador. She's an award-winning author and radio talk show host. And every week on the Nancy Pristine Show, you'll hear tips, stories, and tested techniques from celebrities, star athletes, and executive business people. People who have achieved greatness in their field. Everyone deserves the ultimate life. And now you can create your own success story and achieve a brand new you by listening to the Nancy Pristine Show. The intent of the Nancy Pristine Show is to give you everything you need for happiness, well-being and success for more on nancy and the show check out her website nancy pristine that's p-r-i-s-t-i-n-e dot com then listen up you will never settle for second best again you're going to love the nancy pristine show every thursday from 12 noon to 2 p.m central time on toginet.com if you're ready for a big change in your work your career your happiness your life it's time for the million dollar mindset with marla tabaka monday afternoons at 2 1 central on toginet.com Marla believes that with the right mindset, anything is possible. Join us as successful life coach Marla Tabaka inspires you and her clients to explore, discover, and live your dreams by developing what she calls the million-dollar mindset. Marla will inspire you to take action on your dreams and reveal secrets to success that will help you realize your own unique power. Tune into the million-dollar mindset for heartwarming stories with Marla Tabaka. Learn tips and tricks to building a successful business and unlock the secrets to creating a happier, more balanced life through abundant thinking and attraction power. For more information on the Million Dollar Mindset, go to our website, MarlaTabaka.com. That's M-A-R-L-A-T-A-B-A-K-A.com. It's the Million Dollar Mindset with Marla Tabaka. Monday afternoons at 2, 1 p.m. Central on Toginet.com. Welcome. 
welcome back to the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clemens. All right, we're back into the final segment of the Coming Out Lounge. Again, my name is Rick Clemens, the Coming Out Coach, and I am live on the air by Coastal with my good friend and fellow coach, Marla Gorlick. So we are going to dedicate the last part of this show to really what full yes coaching is all about because Marla has gone through a lot, divorce, her son coming out. And, you know, one of the things I know is your son's coming out gave you a really big gift as a mother and as a woman. And um, could you just talk a little bit about that gift, Marla, because I think that really becomes the basis of your full yes living coaching Yes, I will, Rick. Thanks. Thank you for asking that. You know, the, the full yes living is really about understanding and appreciating and honoring that we're made up of four parts. And we've got the, the mental part, the emotional, the physical, and the spiritual. And each one of those parts has a voice, has interest, has needs, has everything that makes it go. And what, what he has shown me and my divorce as well is that I didn't pay attention to all four parts. Mm. And that was the formation of Full Yes Living. Wow. That's fascinating. So we have the mental, the emotional, the physical, and the spiritual. Those were the four parts, correct? Correct. So which one would you say was being least paid attention to in your marriage? Uh, oh, definitely the emotional, mm. definitely the physical. Mm. Do you mind sharing with our listeners why you say the physical? Because I know there's a beautiful secret right there. You uh, lost a lot of weight. I did? <laughs> And there's the humor right there. <laughs> you know, uh, the Striking. physical... The, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. This woman is strikingly beautiful. If you go to the show page, you're going to see this. And every time I hear that she lost a huge amount of weight, I look at that picture and I go, really? Really? So, but anyway, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Well, I, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't lose a huge amount of weight. What really happened for me was... Um, I stopped obsessing about mm. weight and thinking about it and, uh, and worrying about it and dieting. And so, lo and behold, uh, whatever weight there was that I no longer wanted to have fell off. Wow. But, the, but the more important piece, the physical that was missing in my marriage was the intimacy. So he and I did amazing tasks together. We did amazing parallel lives. We did amazing career. We did amazing raising children. We, we did not have the physical and the emotional connection uh, in our relationship. Wow. So you have the checklist going. This is how we do life. We know you do this. You show up at the club. You do this. You show up for the kids' games. You, you know, go to Temple, all the stuff. We knew how to do the checklist. But outside of the, what wasn't on the checklist – there wasn't a whole lot there. Correct. There was, um, there was no, uh, no level of communication that one would expect and hope for in a relationship. And I, I always chalk it up to, as crazy as this sounds, Rick, uh, we just being naive and stupid. There's that word again. <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> but it is. I love the naive because... The naive is when we refuse to look in the mirror. Yes. yes. That's really what it's about. Yes. You know? it, and it's, it is when um, any risking of the status quo mm -hmm. is too overwhelmingly frightening because you have no idea where it may go. Well, you know, but you and I were having a conversation not too long ago about, you know, your full yes living and the coaching and everything and how, <clears throat> whether it's, men or women, and you tend to focus and prefer, you know, I would say to want to go work with women and help them learn to do the full yes, what we hit upon was, we don't even know if they 
don't know what full yes living is. That they, they right. you know, they, and this is one of those conundrums that we have these little get togethers where you and I talk with some other coaches about. So what is it? Well, are they really not getting that they're not living the full yes? Or is this status quo just so powerful? And it's almost as if the blinders are on and that's just how you do this. The blinders right. stay. And, and I think also, Rick, that women uh, and men too uh, are accustomed to settling. They don't even know they're settling because everyone around them is settling. So their relationships may be not inspiring them. They may feel uh, unfulfilled in their careers. They're perhaps dissatisfied with how they take care of themselves physically, but they settle. Right. And they, they just have this belief that it's the other women out there that can feel inspired in their relationships, that can have careers that excite them, or, or that physically they're taking care of themselves in the best way that serves them. Well, no, I love this because we had that conversation around, so how do you even know if you're settling? You know, so <laughs> right. Why? You don't even know you're settling. And interestingly enough, that really got me thinking about so many different things that are going on in my life right now that it does beg the question, how do you really know when you're settling? What does that mean? And for each one of us, I believe it's going to be different, but that's where I love how you're coming in and you're really helping people identify what does full yes living mean for them. So what would be one of the things you would tell our listeners that they could maybe tap into to really start realizing what their full yes might look like? Uh, well, I would simply begin with asking them those three questions I just asked you. Are your relationships inspiring you? Are, are you feeling satisfied in your career? Are, are your, are your um, other aspects of your lives fulfilling? If you're answering no, you're settling. I would then, I, I would then want to know, well, these choices that you're making for yourself, are these just a mental yes? Are these just an emotional yes where, where you're coming from a place of fear and doubt and, and just emotions running everything? I'd, yeah. I would want to know what, where are these yeses in your life and where are these partial yeses? Okay, so what I'm kind of hearing here then is what you're really trying to help people do is, you know, no, don't just get a yes in one area. Really, it would be a full yes would be you would be saying, yes, in my relationship, I feel a physical yes. I feel an emotional yes. I feel a um, spiritual yes. All of these are all yeses to the best of their ability, and that's really when you would know you're not settling. Absolutely. And when you have yeses, for, for parts of your life, for your relationships, for your career, for how you care for yourself, there's not a lot of drama going on in your life. There isn't, there isn't resentment that's showing up. There isn't regret that's showing up because you made these choices honoring all parts of this fabulous you. Right. Right. You know, and it's so interesting because I, <clears throat> it doesn't matter where I travel, I always wake up early. And of course, so here I am waking up this morning and the whole rest of the house is sound asleep. And I went downstairs, grabbed my bike and decided I was going to go do a tool around Provincetown, go out by the beach and all that. And just as I got ready to go, I started feeling a little bit of a no come up. And I'm like, what? What is this about? And suddenly I realized what it was is I was feeling like in order to make the vacation the best it could be for the family, I really needed to be here and kind of just sitting here waiting for them to get up so that I could, you know, be here when they woke up, start making breakfast. And I, I suddenly, I don't know if you felt this channeling, maybe this was when the earthquake hit, I have no idea, but I suddenly started channeling Marla saying, just go do your full yes for you, Rick, right now. And I'm so glad I did, because I got out on my bike, I was with me, I was doing something I really enjoyed doing, I was seeing Provincetown in my own way without anybody else riding with me, and I realized I had my physical yes going on, my emotional yes, you know, my spiritual yes was coming up. Everything was there. Everything. Because I allowed myself to go be full yes with myself in that moment. I anyway. love that, Rick. I love that. And, you know, for people who don't think that that's possible, 
I am here to tell you that I am in a marriage that is nothing like my first marriage, total full yes. I mother my children so different from how I used to mother them. I am in a career now that is completely different from what I spent decades doing in my first life. And, and I've never felt better. I, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> I, I actually can go to Denny's now and get that cheap breakfast. I feel better, have more energy than I've ever had before. That's fantastic. So I want to make sure we, we let the listeners, I want to hear the four, four yeses again. So it's okay. spiritual. We, emo- we have, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Spiritual, emotional, physical, and what's the last one? The last one is mental. So that means your thoughts, your values, and your beliefs. That's your mental. Your emotional is how you connect with your emotions, how your emotions react to certain things. The physical is the, the energy that you have toward whatever it is that you're going forward with. And the spiritual is your connection to your purpose, to your mission, to everything else that's going on and within the world. Wow. So I'm gonna, we've got just a couple of minutes left, so I want to ask a couple of quick questions here based on the full yes and also your experience with your son. What would be your best piece of advice you would give someone whose child is coming out of the closet? Be there. Listen, understand, but here's the key, Rick. Accept you for who you are first, and then you'll be able to fully accept yourself. Mm, That's powerful. Accept you so you can accept them, which is something that I always say to clients, too. Until you fully accept yourself as a gay or a lesbian, you cannot, you cannot expect someone else to accept you. So we're going into our last 30 seconds. I want to say, first of all, thank you for helping me do my first bi-coastal broadcast today, Marla. It's been so lovely connecting with you and sharing you your beautiful full yes living. I wish we had a whole another hour, but we've got 10 seconds left. So I'm going to say love you. See you in another couple of weeks when I get back to L.A. And everyone, please go out there, step out, step up, and step into loving Thank you for joining us today with the Coming Out Lounge with your host, Rick Clements. Make sure you tune in with us next week, same time, same place, for the Coming Out Lounge.